Well, now that I'm done with my Christmas shopping, let's see what I have left in my bank account. Gah! Welcome to Five Points of Articulation and Happy Holidays. The Five Points I Articulate are packaging, presentation, poseability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and this is a very special Christmas-themed review. It's Christmas Eve, and what better time to take a look at the Four Horsemen Figure Obscura Christmas Carol's Ghost of Jacob Marley. Starting with the packaging, and if you saw my Father Christmas video, you'd know that the package is one of the best parts. This one cleverly uses the image of Jacob Marley as a door knocker. Very cool logo they've worked out. On the back they have a write-up of the character and the lore, but this is only a magnetic shell that doubles as a backdrop. Inside we get Ebenezer Scrooge. They even detailed all the tiles around the fireplace. If you've read the book, you'd know that's actually accurate to the source material. And if you haven't read the book, keep this artwork in mind, because we're going to talk about it again later. Inside that cover is a window box. The artwork is very cool and features all the wandering spirits in London. Lots of really cool designs here. Pretty sure I've seen her on she -Ra. But again, just like Father Christmas, the painting is gorgeous. Also like Father Christmas, the top has the Four Horsemen logo. It cleverly combines the number four with an H. Since I gave extra credit to Father Christmas for packaging, I'm giving Jacob Marley two whole points. Moving on to presentation, and Jacob Marley stands at seven inches. As I said in my Father Christmas review, I'm not an expert on Mythic Legion, so I really can't tell you what is or is not reuse. I just know that this is awesome. Though these peg holes on the back definitely make me think it is. Starting at the top, this head is perfect. I love the cold, ghastly blues. There's some rotting here at the forehead, and if you look on the sides of the mouth, you can see tears, which will come into play later. That brings us to the rag on his head. If you ever wondered why Jacob Marley has that, it's because back in the day, that's how they kept corpses' mouths from opening. He's got long gray hair, and is it just mirrored as the profile kind of look like Peter Cushing. Either way, the hair hangs nice and has some shading in it, and as we move down, the costume continues that blue and gray motif. The coat is actually nice and soft, and was cast in translucent plastic. This really helps to give it that otherworldly feel. The buttons almost remind me of a pirate coat. Like, if Four Horsemen wanted to, they could totally use this as a base model for Captain Hook. And if you're watching Four Horsemen, hint hint. The collar and ascot are a separate piece. A little bit of gray in the sleeves to bring out the texture. And there's some nice shading and texturing in the cuffs. My only nitpick are the obvious elbow joints. His hands are bony and veiny, and his nails are claw-like. Fun fact, when you die, the skin around your fingernails pulls back, which makes them look like they're growing longer. This is one of the things that contributed to the vampire myth. We see more of that texturing on the waistcoat, the belt's very leather-like, and the gray pants make for a very nice contrast. And then moving down, there's some more great texture and paint and the boot tops, which leads to see-through feet. This is such a cool effect, and honestly, one of my favorite parts of this figure. Obviously, Jacob won't be complete until we weigh him down with all his chains. For now, and for presentation, I'm giving Jacob Marley one whole point. Moving on to poseability, and it's always a great sign when the toy company warns you that the figure might break if you don't heat up the joints first. That said, at least they warn you. From the top in Marley's heads and a ball joint, popping that off does give us an opportunity to appreciate the detail underneath, especially the bony back of the neck. Not only that, but there's actually a swivel in there. That gives you a little bit of extra side to side. Despite the hair, he can look up a bit. Just just know that you are kind of popping the head off in the process. Down's no problem though, and since that ball joint is nice and large, he does get a bit of tilt, and since he's a ghost, all the way around. Moving on down, I will warn you, the arm popped out, but it didn't break, so that's a good thing. He can raise that arm just under 90 degrees. Moving on down, he doesn't have any kind of bicep cut, but the elbows can swivel, and also hinge about 90 degrees. Speaking of swiveling and hinging, that's what the wrists do. And then moving to the middle, and Marley has a ball jointed waist. Since the jacket's nice and soft, he actually can arch back a bit, but just look at this hunch forward. Just so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about, here he is with the coat off. He also gets a really great tilt, and of course twist. Below the belt and Marley has swivel hinge hips that admittedly are pretty ugly. Fortunately, the waistcoat does a great job of hiding them. He can kick this high, which given that waistcoat is really impressive. And pushing the coat aside, he can split this wide. Traversing down the leg and that swivel hinge gives him thigh cut. He only has single jointed knees, but they do bend.
at 90 degrees, they also twist. And then moving all the way down, Marley has ankle balls that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. And thanks to the see-through feet, you can actually see what that joint looks like. I know a lot of collectors will be let down by the single jointed knees and ankles, but personally I don't mind if Jacob Marley's ghost isn't as articulated as a Marvel legend. Besides, his midsection is better articulated than most DC multiverse. I know that not everyone's going to agree, but for posability, I'm giving Jacob Marley one whole point. Moving on to playability, and what is there to say about all the accessories that Jacob Marley comes with? Much. First things first, and you've already seen this incredible open mouth head, this of course is why they use that bandage. I'm guessing this splotch on the chin is an error, but the gore does look pretty cool to me. I love the sculpting and the grimy teeth. If that doesn't look like a lamenting spirit, I don't know what does. Four Horsemen also gave Jacob three additional sets of hands. So not only does he have these grabby hands, he has other grabby hands, slightly more open, more clutching style hands, and then these more outstretched, um, coming to get you type hands. Oh, and remember the image of this Jacob Marley door knocker? He actually has it as an accessory. Not only is the sculpting amazing, but you can also see that green in there to show how old and weathered it is. You can actually move the ring, and there's a hole in the back so you can hang it up. And if that wasn't enough, he even has the screaming version. What a great set of knockers. Speaking of doors, he has a bag of keys. Altogether, there are 12 of them with three unique sculpts. Now let's see, key to the house, key to the car, and the key to the... Of course, they're really for all of these. The chains are the centerpiece for both Jacob Marley and also this figure. Jacob Marley may have forged his chains by laboring on his greed and apathy toward others, but these chains were clearly a labor of love. Several of the strands come with miniature padlocks and keys, and then a couple of the longer ones come with books. These have been so meticulously sculpted and painted you'd think you could actually open them. Just look at the fake leather and the gilded edges. Three of the others have cash boxes. Each one is their own unique sculpt. Not only that, but they're actually functional boxes with removable lids. It would have been so much cheaper and easier to make them solid pieces, but instead you get some hidey spots. Of course, if you really want to hide something, you need to have a safe. Wonderful beat up iron texture throughout. The wheels don't roll, but they look good. The door, however, does open, revealing something inside. I don't know why Jacob Marley has one of these in his safe, but I am starting to see why he'd be a condemned spirit. It. The cool part is, if you wanted to, you could use it as an alternate head. As is, it looks like the aftermath of a saw trap. Speaking of which, just look at this harness for all of Marley's chains. Luckily, it's made of a nice soft plastic. I don't know if you need to do this, but to make life easier, I popped his head and his arms off and then slid the harness over it. I love this concept, and I think it looks way better than any of the movies. I like that they made the chains more naturally colored, because it really looks like a spirit tangled up in something tangible and real and heavy. This has got to be the most weighed down Jacob Marley I have ever ever seen. Now remember when I said we'd be coming back to this artwork? The reason why the Four Horsemen can make a figure like this is because Scrooge exists in the public domain. As such, they didn't just include this artwork on the box, they actually included it in their own version of the book. The actual novella, but beautifully illustrated. Well, stave one anyway. Christmas Carol was written in five different staves, Marley being the first stave, with the final page promising us that the rest of the ghosts are on the way. I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love this. And just like with Father Christmas, they used that artwork to create a greeting card, though as nice as it is, I can't imagine I'd ever want to part with it. Captive bound and double ironed as I may be by these accessories, playing well with others is also the business of playability. Starting with another dreadful apparition, famous for his chains, and here we have Spawn, but for my only other Four Horsemen figure, and here we have the figure obscura Father Christmas. I'm I'm honestly pretty astonished at the scaling difference between the two. Even so, for some other Christmas figures, and here we have the Naughty or Nice Classic Santa, the McFarlane Toys Batman Santa, the DC Collectibles Holiday Harley Quinn, and the Star Wars Black Series Holiday Mandalorian. For scaling with other Hasbro lines, and here we have the Adventure Series Indiana Jones, the Lightning Collection SPD Green Ranger, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Storm Shadow, and then for Marvel Legends comparison, here we have Iron Man. Anthony Stark. 
You must change your ways. All right, time to make a Ghostbuster armor. Who are you gonna call? Moving over to Mattel, and here we have the Jurassic World Amber Collection, Owen Grady, the Hollywood elite, John Cena, and the Masterverse, He-Man. And now for my very scientific Rebirth Batman scale, and here we have DC icons, Mattel DC Comics Multiverse, DC Essentials, McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, and the DC Multiverse Battle Damaged. As long as I'm here warning angry rich people to open their shut-up hearts to the world, no. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. For a relative scale comparison, here's Jacob Marley with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Tiny Tim, is that you? Uh... Yes. If it wasn't abundantly obvious, for playability, I'm giving Jacob Marley one and a half points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Charles Dickens described Christmas as a time when want was most keenly felt and abundance rejoices. At $60 retail, I think it's worth every farthing. Alas, he is currently sold out and only available on the aftermarket. Hopefully they'll restock him, but based on availability for price, I'm giving the ghost of Jacob Marley half a point for a far more glorious than grand total of six out of five. What's your favorite version of A Christmas Carol, and what ghost are you looking forward to the most? Sound off in the comments, and Merry Christmas. For more festive videos, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. Like Frosty the Snowman, I'll be back again someday. Until then, play nice, have fun, and be merry.